Hey, Mr. Larry. I uh, decided, hey, this would be a lot easier if I just show you uh, how to, to balance the blades and uh, rather than tell you. So um, it should be on there on the, on the plans, but uh, you know, once again, if it's not, we apologize. Uh, but pretty well, this is a, a blade that was made for the DAG, DAG R1, uh, but it would work on the DAG R2. And um, what we have here is this goes in, you know, it's about, I told you three quarter, but it's in between three quarter and one inch of uh, the actual hole. But if you make it at about this end of the hole, about three quarter, you'd be doing good. Bolt size, the, I believe you mentioned the eight, I believe it was eight thirty seconds. That's going to work out fine. You don't have to go with a really big bolt size. Uh, I believe I use uh, a six mil on this thing, uh, but uh, but anyway, the bolt's not going to shear. It's going to be uh, this is going to break before the bolt breaks. So this is how you do it. Before you cover it, and a lot of times I go ahead and I, I put the caps on, right? And you get the wire, and you put the wire in there, and then you're going to have to figure out where along this line here you're going to put your uh, your hole. So you have to have like a some triangular stock, or I've always used this guy here, this leveler, and uh, put it on its edge. And say for example, this is a uh, this is Sig Airfoil balsa, but say for example there was a wire here. Of course, that leading edge would be more on the lifting uh, spot. That's why we have that lead on the front, that wire. So what I would do is if I had the lead, you know, the wire on there and everything else, I take this and I'd look over the edge and what I'm trying to do is find the balancing point on this wood. So if I move too far forward, it's going to fall forward, too far back falls back. So it's about right, about right there. When I feel like I have it, what I do is I push down hard and that's going to score the wood. Now you're going to find that when you do one, most of them are going to be about the same. Uh, so I don't think it's a bad rule to just go ahead and uh, when you find it on one, you can transfer this information on the other ones. Now after you do that, then you kind of have to look to see where that's scored at. And I know that the balancing point on this piece of wood is very much towards the center but it's about one inch and one, two, three eighths. Yeah. So one and three eighths back is where I'd put that hole. Okay? So that's pretty well it. This one here, after the wire was put down, if this was not covered, this would work out a lot better. Uh, another thing you can do is you can take a piece of carbon fiber paper and you flip it over and when you push down it'll emboss a little mark on there. So let's see if these, if I put it at the hole it's, it's right on. Uh, but say for example the hole wasn't there, all right, I'll, I won't look at the hole. The balancing point is about right there. So I'm going to push down, ah, that rolled off. But you get the gist. You push down, figure out where it scored it. I can see it scored it right there. So I go back. Uh, let's see here. I'm so bad at fractions. Uh, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. A little bit less than seven eighths. So then you have to get into the sixteenths. So anyway, but you get an idea on how you find that spot, and then you transfer that info up to here. Now the way you cut the uh, you know these the ends of these makes it a little difficult so you have to have like an imaginary line and go in and uh, find your hole. So that dear sir is how you find the bouncing point and the reason for that is is the reason why we have that lead there like I said is to get the bouncing point on the uh, the lifting surface so it would be about right here so all right. If you have any questions, Larry, feel free. Send me more emails. So makes me feel like I have friends. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Have a good day, sir. Thanks.